folks, 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 welcome back. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments. And Rudy, are you going to cover these buyouts? What? Reserveless buyouts in 2022? How is that even possible? Yes, folks, there's been attempts. I've had multiple messages regarding reserveless buyouts. Hold on. Attempts at reserveless buyouts with more low to mid tier cards. Cards that tend to be between like $5 and $95. Kind of that. Not really high end, not super mega power nine. Um, seems to be focused right now on mostly antiquities. We know in the last year we went through this weird time where most of the activity in buyouts for the reserve list was either revives, non dual lands. We were talking about that for many months. Wheel of Fortune, the copy artifacts, the doppelgangers, you know, Rudy's fork in your ex. But now it's like obsession with Brothers War. And the speculation that Brothers War and Magic's 30th anniversary, after the backs of Finding Legends boxes, you guys don't actually believe they found the Legends boxes, right? That's not a thing, right? Nobody actually believes that? Okay. Um, everyone's speculating that Brothers War is going to have some sort of synergy with Antiquities, obviously Urza's Mishra's type cards from 1994 Antiquities set. Now, my personal opinion, um, it's possible. It's definitely possible there's going to be some overlap or connections or synergy or blends or something that's going to connect with those old school cards. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's more of a situation where there's a lot of people in private groups and friends that just want to have fun. It's been so long since we've had buyouts. And it's, I think that people just enjoy it. And it's been kind of really since the major buyout blaze of like 2018 through 2020. It's been so many years and the market's been so flat to negative to quiet. I just think some people just want to do it. I don't think there's really that much drama or going on with it. And again, the cards we're talking about are people spending maybe a couple thousand dollars, maybe a couple hundred dollars targeting, you know, a Fallen Empires card, an Ice Age card. Even if you spend a couple grand targeting some Antiquities cards. Um, you know, I've talked, I know a lot for a while, a lot of people wanted me to talk about um, the Archaeologist Antiquities, one of Rudy's favorite cards. That was bought out because I remember I, every time I did my um, collection buying video, which again, I got one or two more films. I apologize. Remember, I got like 14 videos backed up on the collection buying. I'm getting there, folks. Bear with me. I'm going to try to get them out like once a week. Um, I talked about like the archaeologist from Antiquities for the longest time. I always, I never understood how it was a $50 to $75 card. It was so iconic. It was so cheap. In today's day and age, the price of everything is so expensive. It blew my mind. And then, of course, when the archaeologist finally spiked above 100 to 150 200 or wherever it is today, a lot of people are all like, oh, God, Rudy, did you know, hey. Look, you know, I've always loved the card. It is what it is. Now, I've got other conversations and patrons ask me about Might Stone and Weak Stone. The two stones from Antiquities also. Do I think there's going to be some sort of connection on that? You know, gives all your creatures plus something or gives all creatures minus something. Um, kind of these stone cards. Or the Silex, which is like, you know, destroys all cards from a particular set or something or a name or a word. Um... I really don't think a lot of these are going to have a lot of influence from Antiquities. I don't give a shit if Wizards finds a hundred boxes of Antiquities and does the same insert of Antiquities in the Brothers War. I'd be happy if they did that, because it'd be really fun to do in box openings. Um, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I, would, I think it'd be awesome if they do. I think Wizards does have a position of Antiquities revives and many of their magic sets through history. But no, it's not Palace and some Indiana Jones warehouse. I don't buy into that story. And I also believe that Wizards doesn't like to reveal their cards or empty their clip all at once. I think they like to space it out and really milk it. I don't see them just having every set for the Magic 30th anniversary, you know, having revised cards inserted, having Antiquities cards inserted, having Legends cards. I don't think they're just going to just blow their load and dump everything over and over. I think they're going to space it out over time. And I think that's just fun. Now... Other cards, Sentinel Druid, also known as the Citadel Druid. Um, you've got a lot of other little Titanius cards. You've got the little Power Leech. A lot of these lower mid-tier uh, Antiquities cards. You know, look, when people always ask me when there's a buyout or attempt to buyout, or someone buys a lot of this stuff, what do I think of it? Um, simply put, I said the same thing every single time. I kind of just say, well, I mean, did you really think that was a $5 card? I mean, when I bought 100, 200 copies of Sentinel Druid from an investor buyout, Hit like Citadel Druid or whatever it is. Uh, hit Alpha Investment Citadel Druid. You can find the video from years ago when I, did, I bought out another investor who was buying out all the Druids for like, and I, I think I paid like $4 a card and he paid like a dollar a card. So he 2 3 x his money 
And then I, you know, got into it with, so now between my personal position, buying out the collector, I probably had like 500 copies of the Druid. Maybe a cost basis of maybe three bucks a card. You know, I'm, I'd have to look at my spreadsheet and pull them from the vault and actually do an exact count, but I just did it because I thought it was cheap and I thought it was a cool card. I never really injected it back in the market. It's been many years. I still have them. Same thing with the Silex. Another investor contacted me, had like 150 copies of the Silex. And before I bought that investor's position, I probably only had maybe 100 copies. And I remember buying those, I don't remember, I think it was a little bit more expensive, like six to eight dollars a card or something. Again, hit Silex Alpha Investments by, you can Google, find the old videos, look at the dates, look at the comments, look at people laughing, it's hilarious. Uh, time has a funny way of taking care of in unfolding, well, it just does its thing. And, you know, yeah, I do think these cards still remain, come on, Ruth is their museum quality pieces! Yeah, well, you know, your stepmom's museum quality piece, and I still believe that. Make fun of me, I can take the hits, Sally. And um, I'm not surprised. Again, when you look at these cheaper cards, you have to understand a lot of younger, newer people to the world of collecting, investing, or shady buyouts, or working with Rudy, don't want to spend millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands. They want to get their toes wet, they want to get involved, and they want to enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with that. Remember, folks, kind of buying out and putting money into old magic. You're not trying to beat the S&P 500. You're not trying to buy out and outperform XYZ stock. You know, it's a means of people doing it because they enjoy it. And the odds of them making money long term are favorable. This has nothing to do with saying, Well, I'm going to do this and beat the S&P 500. Me, me. It doesn't work that way. The number one reason people do buyouts and buy into old magic cards, sealed product of anything, Pokemon, new magic, old magic, anything. The number one reason people do it is because they believe the product's underpriced and they enjoy it and they'd rather go on that path. It's something they have a passion for and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, listening to people trying to misconstrue that as, well, you're never going to beat the old S&P 500. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's silly. It's not defined to do that. No one ever claimed that to happen. It's just more market noise from morons on the internet. And again, the key to all this stuff, diversification. Nobody can predict it. If you're going to be into collectibles, you need to be old reserve list, old sealed product, new sealed product against multiple card games, not including not just Magic, including other card games, new and old. And of course, diversify and take that shotgun approach and spread out. And of course, we've talked about it a million times. If you're not already maxing out your retirement account, you don't have a stable place to live and job, then what are you doing buying collectibles? You have no business doing that. I don't know how many patrons over the years. I've actually closed patrons' accounts because they wanted to, they only had like $5 a month to spend and they wanted to go on a payment plan for 6 to 12 months to buy one booster box. And I've told them, you are not in a position to do that. I'm literally going to remove your account. You need to focus on getting your life better, make a better, stronger foundation. And you know what? That'll lead you to a longer, happier success rate. Not trying to do payments in nickel and dime. You need to work on your life first. That is the, if you don't have the foundation, you can't build on top of it without it toppling over. She will become too top heavy. She's going to have back pains and eventually you're going to have problems. Wait, what are we talking about? It's just how it works. There are certain foundations in life and kind of, they call it like a higher, remember, remember when we were kids, they had the food pyramid. You're supposed to do like certain things and then the, then the next layer with fruit and vegetables and bread and different things at the very top with sugars and bad things for you because you're supposed to do all the bigger, more important, healthier things first. Same principle. If you don't have a stable income, you don't have no bad debt, you need a good stable place to live, you shouldn't be paying some creepy, terrible landlord like me a bunch of your money every month for rent. You need to get all these things checked off in your life. Your family, your loved ones, your future generations will thank you and it's important. Now, again, I know those are boring and unsexy things, and it's more fun to buy out all the sentinel druids. It's fun, but you got to be ready for it. You need to have a plan. You need to be able to hold anybody and click mouse and max out cards and flip credit cards. and bit. You have to be prepared for the conclusion and the confidence and all these silly words and all these. You just got to be mentally ready for it, folks. That's all I'm getting at. Enough rambling. It is what it is. So... That's what I think about the reserve list stuff. I think it's essentially some younger people or maybe smaller time investor collectors. They're having fun. It's been a while. They miss it. No, I don't think this is a sign of a huge boom in collectibles right now. I do believe as we move into 2023, we will see more reserve list buyouts. And some of them are going to get more intense. And there's a couple cards on my own radar. 
there's a couple heavy hitting cards that I'm still very surprised in the, um, I don't want to go into details and m m cause any shakeups, but there are some old higher end cards that are in the multi thousands of dollars per card that I still feel are severely underpriced. And it's something I've been watching for many months and tracking privately. And, you know, you can't have Double Masters collector case of eight boxes for three grand and have like Power Nine for three, four grand or a Black Lotus for ten grand. There are certain things when the water level goes up, some of these things are not going up properly. And I feel there is going to be some market anomalies and opportunities. And yes, you some of you may not want to hear it. But some of these individuals doing buyouts on little druids and power leeches and little silly cards or, you know, some of them are going to work. And the prices will stick. As long as that individual doesn't panic or do anything stupid, they will probably make money and it will probably work out just fine. And they will probably have a good time. And because of that success and dopamine hit, they're probably going to return and do it bigger and better the second and third time around. Um, as of right now, I'm still not seeing the big money. Like, you know, you're not seeing, like, Rudy go out there and spend, you know, a quarter million dollar on bizarre of libraries or Loas and bizarre Baghdads. We're not seeing that kind of capital being deployed right now. But there is chatter and discussion on I've had multiple conversations with some others regarding reserve lists of certain cards that are becoming somewhat attractive and surprising that they are still priced where they are. Um, but I haven't made any moves, don't have any plans to make any moves anytime soon. And, um... I think there's still a good amount of time before we really enter a collectible bull market. I think it, we have a good amount of months ahead of us. But it doesn't mean we won't start to see steady, slow upticks. But as far as crazy buyouts, I think we do have some time, folks. Hope you guys learned something today. And uh, I don't see anything wrong with buyouts. I think people are having fun. I think it's cool.